Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Annie. Good morning. Good morning, sweetie. And now where's my tubby bear? Hi, tubbies. Hello, are you coming out? Hello, you gotta go get your meds. So just like usual, Tubby gets meds twice a day, morning and night. Two are stimulants for her GI tract, upper and lower. And preventatively, she just gets a thing of gas drops. And then we also have her on Medicam because she does have arthritis in her back end now. And she takes these like a champ. So I usually do the stomach meds and the gas drops first and then just give her a bit and then give the pain med. So we'll go walk around here. She makes me come to her even though she knows I have her meds for her. You coming out? We can't see you though. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. Good girl. And she's so used to the fact that she doesn't get vegetables, that she doesn't react to everybody else getting tomatoes. So that's kind of nice. Makes things a bit easier. Good girl. So, next I gotta tidy up, but I see I forgot to get a new garbage bag. It's garbage day here, so I already took that out. So I'll just have to get a garbage bag and then we're gonna start spot cleaning. Hi Apple, how are you feeling? How are you doing? So Apple's going to go to the vet to get assessed for arthritis. Good girl. So for Apple, things that she was doing that make me think she has arthritis will confirm with an x-ray. Or she was doing, there you go, hops with her back legs versus walking them. She was hopping them along. Uh, she was peeing herself, so she was standing up peeing. Normally the females back their bum to the floor and stretch it out, so they're peeing right against the fleece. She was just standing peeing and it was going down her legs. Uh, what else was she doing? Oh, after any bum baths and stuff like that, tidying her bum, she would act like she was really sore. Excuse me, Tubalina. Hey, thank you. Hey, sweetheart. So I'm just doing pain meds and we go to the vet to get an x-ray to check to make sure that's what it is. So an x-ray is really easy to tell if they have arthritis. And then that way too, you know it's nothing worse. So yeah, that's what we'll be doing. So I'm going to start tidying everybody up. We'll start with these little munchkins. So this is Angus and Autumn. Sweetheart, how are you? What are you doing? Sorry, I feel like my voice sounds a bit funny this morning. Sometimes when I use my asthma inhaler, it kind of gives me like a gruff voice for a little bit, and I feel like that's what I have. So I apologize if I sound funny. Lots of poops in this section. Are you two smooching? Were you? I think I caught you smooching. We'll see if we can catch these guys doing laps this morning. It happens every once in a while while we're tidying up that they get bopping around and it's so cute. So 
So I spot clean morning and night. And like look how much we already have just from two piggies, which is great. And whenever you're spot cleaning, it's always a good idea, as gross as it sounds, to make sure that their poops are looking normal. Because you can tell a lot if a piggy's poops are not looking good. So yesterday, Raisin had, I think they're called foxtails. Every once in a while, they're in the hay boxes, the orchard grass. And they suck because they're so sticky. And sometimes they get in their eye and it was sticking, not like in her eyeball, but sticking in the corner of her eye. So I had to take that out, which she didn't react to, but then probably, a, I don't know, three or four days before this, Velvet had a piece of hay in her eye that was like tucked down underneath her eyeball which I took out for her and that hurt her but luckily everything went back to normal and I'm so thankful that I have pain meds on hand so Medicam is an anti-inflammatory plus a pain med that's what Pecan gets for her arthritis so I was thankful that I had that on hand to give both of those girls because eye injuries are very sore but thankfully it wasn't an injury it was just something stuck in their eye because both of them their eyes look totally normal after I got the piece of hay and the little foxtail thing out so that kind of sucked I always feel bad and then raising getting something in her eye scares me because she only has the one good eye because she's missing the other one so I would never want something to happen to her one eye so I just got to make sure I pay attention to what her eye looks like this morning when I see her that it's all all good because that was just last night that I took it out and rinsed and it looked good and gave her some medicam just in case it was sore. This little lady is a bit messy with the pellets. I forgot to keep them kind of away from the water. Aren't you little Annabelle? Hi sweetheart. How are we doing today? So depending how the intros between Annalise and the herd go, if they go awesome, I think I might spay Annabelle. Because comparing the two now, Annabelle seems like the spaz. So she's always weird about me tidying things up, weird about me reaching in and petting her. She just seems, you know, like how I thought Annie used to be. Just a little bit on the crazy side for no reason so if it seems like in intros that Annie's really changed from having been spayed I might consider it because chances are any hormone issues that Annie had would be pretty genetic so we'll see because I'm hoping Annie goes with the herd and then let's say I get Annabelle spayed then maybe Annabelle could go with them as well because at this time, I'm definitely leaning towards not getting more guinea pigs. So I'm really hoping that everybody can just match up with the herd. Because I have 10 pigs right now, and honestly, that feels like more than enough for me. Because they're expensive, they're time consuming. And I really don't feel like I have the space to section off two more cages for two pigs to be in because Annie's section would need to get bigger which takes away some more from the herd so I don't know these are just thoughts I'm having right now at the time being it's all going to kind of depend on how things go with the intro with Annie to kind of judge whether I get more pigs or not because 
And honestly, at this point, as I said, just not really feeling like it. Because I kind of have my hands full with Pecan being a senior. Now Apple's kind of being a senior. And that will be two pigs that will need medication. So it's kind of a lot. Because then um, I'll have a big wave of seniors with Huckle, Annalise, Annabelle, Angus, and Reese. They're all going to end up being in the five, like the four to five range within a couple years. Like two years all of those pigs are going to be seniors so that's potential for a lot of pigs that could you know maybe need medication or special care for bum bass can i have this thank you which it gets time consuming seniors are a lot of work some seniors you know people get really lucky that their seniors are doing really well but sometimes you get seniors who Need a lot of bum baths, need a lot of extra care, need medications. Where did I put my, oh, right here. Yeah, need medications, all of that. So we'll see. As I said, that's just what I'm feeling right at the moment. And also the more pigs you get, the harder it is to spread the love around to everybody. Where right now I feel very content for how much attention everyone gets. So we'll see. I'm just trying to take it slow. So for Annie, I've been doing bed switches with the herd and her, just so that scents are more familiar, which has been working well. As you can see, Reese is sniffing it up because I set her bed down there. So I do that every time I'm cleaning, I'll swap out one of the beds. Like we'll give her this bed that's been in the herd's cage. And it's just a good idea. Some people will say it doesn't mean anything, it doesn't work. But this is what I did before I let Huckle and Apple meet the herd and I swear, everybody but Raisin was concerned about a new pig joining. So it's good for her too, because then she can go sniff around, get used to what everybody smells, smells are like. So that when we do intros, I'm hoping it won't be so overwhelming. It won't be so new. Like you're still going to have all the usual behaviors. I just hope there'll be a little bit of recognition where she'll be like, oh, okay, I've smelled these guys before. Those are my neighbors. That's wishful thinking, but I still think it has to be better for her to be somewhat familiar with their scents versus having no idea what they smell like. And the really positive things are she does really pay attention to the pigs at the bars. So she likes to sniff them. Are we popcorning a bit? Oh my goodness. See, she's so happy. So I feel like even if she can't go with the herd, she will be very happy in this section with herself being right by the herd because that's the thing if i don't get more pigs both annalise and annabelle are right beside pigs i'm not a one pig home for them meaning like they're not the only pig in the house so i'm gonna do what i can do to get them matched up but i don't think it's the worst thing in the world if they don't match up what are you two talking about the two seniors are probably like, hey, do you get meds? Yeah, I get meds. Do you, does your bum hurt? Yeah, my bum hurts. Are you talking about that? T you tell her, Pecan, that it's not too bad. Here we go, sweetheart. Oh. Okay. That's so cute, the little seniors talking. You guys are next? What were we discussing? And this is why I was given two hands. You two girls are so sweet. Yeah, you tell your pecan that I'll be okay. Then mommy will give her pain meds every day. You girls are so sweet. Okay, but I have to keep tidying. What do you think? 
began. Everybody just loves these quarter houses. I think they're my new favorite little cozy for the pigs. Like, look how big that is. The only thing is I need some more pads that are those shapes. Hi, Beaky, huh? How are you? One thing that I feel like is with just just with this extra section here, I feel like it takes me so much longer to tidy up in the morning. So that was one more reason that I was feeling like I didn't want to have this set up permanently with Annie separated because I just feel like it's taking me extra long trying to go around these sections and if the herd and Annie could share this entire cage I just feel like the mess will be more spread out so that would be super ideal hey Ray hey Ray how's your eye well it looks normal good that's positive. She was such a good girl too when I took the little foxtail out of her eye. Because usually, you know, she doesn't really like to sit with you and you kind of can freak her out pretty easy. But I took her out, took it out, and then she actually did sit quietly with me while I was just holding her and giving her some snuggles. So that was kind of nice. I liked to imagine that she was like, oh, thanks. You got that nasty thing out of my eye. When I got the thing out of Velvet's eye, it really sucked because it was in there deeper. But it was late at night and I was like, I need to get this out before the morning because what if it disappears totally under her eye and then the vet can't get it at all? So we got it out. But it wasn't as fun as getting raisins out, which was two seconds. I hate when pigs get stuff in their eye. I just feel terrible for them. And Velvet, she's really hard to see her face with it being dark. Okay, can you get out of the corner? Come on. So it took me a little bit to realize she had something in her eye. So during the evening, I did their tidy up. And every time I was coming downstairs, she was in a bed not eating out not out eating hay and stuff and I kept saying to myself like okay that's a bit weird but then I'd be like no no I'm just being spazzy and being like you know neurotic overthinking that something's wrong and then it was the last time I was down before I was going to turn out the light that she was actually out and I just caught a glimpse of her the correct way and I was like something looks weird with her eye so I took her out and yeah, sure enough, she had that huge piece of hay in her eye. And then I felt bad because then I was thinking I should never doubt if I think something's the matter with them, I should just find them, take them out of the cage and look at them. Because I was like, she probably had that in her eye all evening. So I felt guilty. But you know how it is where you think like, okay, just calm down. You're just being a spaz. Like she's fine because she is a shyer pig. So I was just kind of making the excuse to, in my head of like, you know, she's just being quiet. But no, she definitely had something up. But we're all good now, aren't we, Velvy? We are all good. She's such a sweetie too. All right, so see, like I feel like I've been working forever and I only got one section done. Now to the runway. <laughs> Hi, Annie. Hiya, Hubble. You look like you're feeling a bit better today, are you? Because we just started our pain meds yesterday. And she goes to the vet tomorrow. So my vet was on holiday. So we couldn't get in yesterday when I wanted to. 
But since it's not an emergency, I decided to wait for her to be back on Friday. So it was Wednesday, I wanted to go. Today's Thursday, she goes Friday. Now, if it was an emergency where like she's not eating or drinking or something else, we would have went to a different vet to get in. But the only reason I'm waiting is because, as I said, it's not an emergency and I have pain meds already. So I've got her started on them. So we'll be all good. But otherwise, I would never wait if it was something terrible. Just throwing that out there. Cause usually, you know, obviously it's very rare that my vet's on holiday right when I want to get a piggy in. But luckily we have found a couple other vets that we can use as a backup, which is great. And did you guys know that on Scotty's Animals, his website, he put together a whole vet list. So it's all organized for like the US, Canada, overseas, Australia. And then there was only a couple other places in Europe that gave suggestions of where to go. But the list is really helpful because you can look under like your province or your state or what have you and see vets that people suggested. So you can take that vet name, put it into Google, and then it'll come up where they are and you can go to that vet. So it's great to have not only one vet, but backup vets, because sometimes your vet might be full, your vet might be on holidays, you know, and you can't really wait. So check that out. I will leave a link down below for his website he's got lots of stuff on that website so feel free to go check that out we'll put that under there who yelled oh you girls in the same bed together. Are you okay? Velvy. I th Velvy took a long time to find her balls, if you will. Before when she was new here, she really didn't know how to pig or how to interact with the other pigs and stuff like that, but she doesn't let stuff stop her anymore. A little bit of a sassy pants, I think. Yeah, because I can remember when, for the longest time, when she was first here, she almost seemed, like, dopey for how to interact with the other pigs or, like, what their signals and signs were meaning. She was just kind of oblivious. But now she has uh, no problem telling other pigs to get lost or not to bug her. She really stands her ground. Are you talking to Annie? Yeah. It's so adorable. She talks all the time now. What are you saying? Are you telling me to hurry up for your veggies? I be can. Ugh. This is the only part of the cage. Like this teeny little section that's pretty hard to reach. But luckily there's not too much happening there. Can we do it? Yep. There we go. So all the new liners that I've been getting lately have more stitching, more like more stitch patterns in them. And I love them so much more because sweeping up the cage is so much easier. Before some of the liners, if they're just stitched on the outer perimeter, the middle was still bunching when you're trying to sweep up. But now it is so much better. So the shops that I get the different stitching from is Darwin's, Cabby Creations, Zoe and Lilo's Toy Box, and then Cindy's Cozy Co. had also done me up uh, different stitch patterns as well. And they all worked out really nicely. So all their patterns are a little bit different, but essentially do the same thing. So all shops that I frequently buy from are down in the description if you guys want to check them out. 
There's also shops for other things down there, like Scotty's Animals is down there. You can buy jewelry from him, piggy earrings. There's t-shirts, whole bunch of stuff. So you can check out his shop. And then Popcorning Piggy has adorable little novelty, quirky, cute guinea pig things. There's adorable shirts and hoodies and sweaters and all that stuff. And she has cards whole bunch of things so you should check that out as well okay we're almost done here almost done so next I have to go get everybody's veggies put together so I do have to get pecan out of the cage for this so let's probably scoop her up while I can she hates to be picked up, even though I pick her up every day, a ton of times a day. You're such a cutie, aren't you? Oh, and I do this all the time. I don't set her little box down before I pick her up. So that would make too much sense. So she sits in here and then I just fill it up with some hay. Yes, sweetheart. I'm sorry. You can go under here. So she likes to hide or sleep under there. And then I just put hay in the other side so she can eat. There we go. I'll move you over here, though. Here. Okay. We all ready now? Ready to go get the veggies? So for our vegetables, I do the same veggies every day and nobody gets bored of them. So we do pepper, bell pepper, and radicchio. And obviously you saw they already got cherry tomato. And then I was doing cucumber for a bit, but I felt like it was giving too many of the pigs some mushy poops. So like too much water content was happening. So I switched to buying some baby carrots again to put with their stuff. So I use one pepper and just split it between everybody. So my personal preference for veggies is to give just enough that they can finish them in like three or four minutes max. And then that's it. Some pigs in the herd, if I give too much veggies, they get soft poops and it just kind of makes a mess. And plus, you're, if I'm feeding way too many, I just feel like they're not eating enough hay. They're eating too many of their veggies. And I like to really promote them to eat lots of hay, to eat their healthy pellets from Sherwood, and then to drink lots of water to flush out their bladders. So a while ago, I had been doing wheatgrass because at one point that was something that Butter Pecan could tolerate. She can anymore, but I was still feeding it after that. And then I had a couple pigs who were having the worst sludge and grit coming out. One was Huckle. And we actually went to the vet for that because I was freaked out that he had a stone because he was crying while he was peeing. And then while we were at the vet's office, he was on a towel and peed. And literally, it was chunks of grit that felt like big pieces of sand that he had peed out. So we stopped the wheatgrass and I swear it took months to get all of that stuff out. So what helped... And there was other pigs too that started having lots of deposits in the cage, like thick ones. Um, so what we did was use the Sherwood urinary tabs. I started feeding those every day to really get the pigs to be flushing out their bladders. And like I said, it probably took a couple months before the deposits went to a very normal, very light, chalky amount. So some days I don't even see any deposits on the fleece. And some days you'll just see a little bit here or there, which is normal to see it because that's how they get rid of any excess calcium. And you don't want to cut out all calcium from your piggy's diet, but they do get plenty for, like adults get plenty from their veggies and from their healthy pellets. So like I don't like to go on the high calcium end of things because as I said, firsthand, feeding too much wheatgrass was not good. It was not safe. 
and I felt so thankful that day when Huckle got an x-ray and it showed that he didn't have any stones so I was like nope we are not doing that again so everything in moderation and you still need to be careful what you're feeding I definitely recommend people getting pellets that are healthier so that's why we use the Sherwood All Timothy and those are absolutely packed with the appropriate amount of vitamin C so I don't supplement vitamin C. The only pig I do once in a while is to pecan. She does eat the Sherwood pellets so she gets some from there but every once in a while I'll just give her a bit extra because she doesn't get the veggies like everybody else. So between the vegetables and the Sherwood pellets I'm satisfied that everybody gets their calcium content correct and that everybody gets the vitamin C that they need. Now extra vitamin C is great for anybody going through surgery or who is ill. So this right here is all the veggies that I give. Oh crap. Sorry guys. So besides the tomato, like this is it for the day. The rest of the day is um, hay and pellets. And that's the way I like to keep it. Hi sweetie. There you go princess. There you go my little lady. Yes little sweet peas. There you are. Yeah, so everybody will eat this veggies in like, you know, three to four minutes and we're done. And that's how I like it, because I don't like veggies sitting around wilting or growing gross in the cage, and I don't like mushy, crummy poops. So everybody has beautiful poops on the amount of veggies that we do, and that's the way I'm keeping it. So the next thing while everybody's eating is I fill up any waters or pellets and I check little pecan here. Hey sweetie, she's eating, so that's good. I like putting her in here for a couple reasons. And the biggest one is once I put her back, I can tell how many poops she's had and how her poops look so that I can assess how her day is going. Because if she has no poops, after she's been in there for a while, then I always know it's one of her slow GI tract days, which I just have to keep an eye out that she's not gonna get bloated. But thankfully, if I'm on time with her meds, she hasn't snatched any veggies, then she does well. So the pellets that we are using, we switched everybody to the Sherwood All Timothy. Uh, the reason was I just wanted to give the pigs the option. Once they made this, I tried with each of the pigs. Did they like the alfalfa Timothy or just the Timothy? And everybody picked this. So I'm gonna give them what they want to eat. And the absorbic acid, which is vitamin C, 2000 milligrams per kilogram. So this is loaded with vitamin C. It's twice as much as the old recipe which I'm really happy about because you can feed less of these and they'll still get the same amount of nutrients they were in the other ones. So the other ones, I was not scared about there being alfalfa in there. We fed that for over a year or more and nobody had a problem. The only problem I had was when I was feeding wheatgrass with everybody's diet and that was a big problem because that's super high in calcium. So everybody still needs to be careful about calcium. I don't believe you need to go as extreme as like taking out all calcium because they need calcium for healthy bones and teeth. And if they're not getting calcium in their diet, it's going to be leached out of their bones. So you could have the potential for issues like that, um, which you don't want. So our pigs need calcium. I don't think when they're adults, they need an extreme amount because at the way I'm feeding, the only thing that really has a lot of calcium in them, you know, would be the pellets that they're eating. There's a little bit in the veggies, and I still see deposits coming out, which is still calcium that they haven't used being excreted through their urine. So everybody's getting enough if they have enough calcium to still be peeing out. So just watch your deposits, like light chalky deposits are very faint deposits, so normal. As soon as they're coming out in clumps and grit, 
that is a warning you should be backing off the calcium maybe backing off veggies so that they're drinking more water to flush out their systems maybe add in some of the sherwood urinary, urinary tablets to get them really flushing things out we need to pay attention to their poops pay attention to their pee so that you could potentially stop something before it goes too far now some pigs it's going to be genetic no matter what you fed them they're going to get stones just like probably any animal some things are genetically they're pre predisposed to things but i definitely feel like since i've had a control on what i feed the pigs knock on wood we haven't had stones the time where i had stones and pigs was back when i would feed um, a different brand pellets that was mostly soy when I would feed way too many of the unhealthy pellets and when I was also careless with loading them up with parsley, cilantro, um, just tons of vegetables that were all high in calcium and I would just kind of feed them whatever the heck I felt like. But now that I have them on a routine on healthy pellets and they eat mostly hay and drink mostly water, you know, fingers crossed, things have been really good for quite a long time. So, it's a really tough thing to balance out piggies' diets. We can't ask them how they're feeling. We can't look inside their bodies to see how they're doing every second of the day. So you just kind of got to do the best that you can and get comfortable and just kind of listen to their bodies. See what they're leaving you behind. Does it look good? Do their poops look good? Does the pee deposits they're leaving look good? Are they acting good? You know, that's all we can do. It's really tough. So I might as well just use the last little bit up. So I'm kind of at the point where I'm just gonna take what comes with the pigs. I used to be really neurotic about the calcium because when I first had pigs, I have three pigs total get stones. And as I said, that was before when I was feeding different pellets and had a different veggie routine. So I was really neurotic for a while about what I was feeding them and all about the calcium and stuff. And then I kind of calmed down. I, I didn't calm down. <laughs> Oops. Hi. That's times like these that make me miss my little bun bun he would clean that up on the floor for me so anyway I kind of calmed down about the calcium and all that especially when I found out about Sherwood's pellets and kind of had to get over the fact that I was feeding alfalfa to adult pigs now I would never feed alfalfa hay or treats with alfalfa but the alfalfa in their pellets for Sherwood made sense to me so that kind of got me over like the being scared about trying new things. But yeah, uh, I have changed so much as a pet owner. I like to learn as much as I can, try new things if some things aren't working. I think just keeping an open mind and taking bits of information from here and there and formulating your own plan for your pigs is the best that we can do. So everybody's diet plans and what works for them is all going to change and be a bit different across the board. But that's the best that we can do as pig parents is try to work together and try to share our knowledge. And then people can take what they will from what we say. You should always do your own research, speak with your own vet, but definitely learning from other people's experiences I think helps. I know I like to watch a lot of different channels and see how they do things and go from there. Are you guys finished? So I just have to... Hi, Velvie. Hi, sweetie. She's looking... I usually hand her pieces of veggie if I find any on the fleece. Oh, we found one. Oh, she's not paying attention. Do you want it? So I have to search to make sure everybody's gotten everything before I put pecan back. Because pecan will get bloated if anything is left. That's another reason I like to feed just the amount of veggies these guys are going to finish in a reasonable amount of time so that I can get tubbies back with them. Hey, Reesey Bear. 
Hi, my big baby. Is that it, Apple? Okay, so Pecan can come back. And we have healthy poops in there, which is good. And she was snoozing. She's so sweet. Up we go, pretty princess. Yeah, we got lots of poops, which is what we like to see, and they all look good. So we are having a good poopy day, right? And she's probably like, Mom, why are you saying that? So rude, eh? So we're gonna get these guys some Timothy hay. I'm going to put a little bit over that way too. I do two piles because with six pigs sometimes they get bumping into each other and get a little bit rowdy. Go move this down. Your eye feel okay Ray? Hey Apple. can't tell if you're blinking too much so I might take Ray out to give her eye a little check over I'll be back Okay, so Ray does not like to be handled, but we're going to have to, hey sweetie, she knows, I, I just have to pick you up, okay? Okay, she gets really spazzy. She is so hard to catch. Okay, we're going to get her. She does not like you coming at her, probably because, you know, the one eye thing, she's never changed. Hey, sweetie. <laughs> oh boy. This is the one thing about this cage is the back and forth for a pig like her. Okay. You're okay, sweetie. You're okay. Good girl. You're okay. You're okay. You're not going anywhere. You're okay, sweet pea. Okay. I just want to have a good look at your eye today. Good girl. Okay, we have a slight cloud. So that means it did scrape a bit of her lens. I don't see anything else in her eye or any inflammation. So this is Toberex, which is an eye ointment. So we are going to do that until her lens heals. So this will be something I'll do twice a day for. Her. There we go. So since she does have a scratch, I'm going to give her some more Medicam as well because eye injuries can be very painful. Good girl. Yeah, so it's a bit blue on the top corner, which is means that she's got it scratched, her lens. So luckily, in my experience, with some antibiotic eye ointment, their eye heals very quickly. See, that's what scares me about her getting hay pokes is she only has one eye. So I do not want anything bad to happen to her other eye. Okay, so I just got to grab the Medicam. Actually, I think I'll take her with me because she, she might freak out a bit if I leave her on the floor. You're good, sweetheart. 
You are a good baby. She's actually doing really well. Okay, you stay right there. Sometimes I feel like they know that you're just helping them. Okay, sweetie. Here we go. This is to help you. Good girl. That's a good girl. So if I didn't have any of this antibiotic cream that's it's not expired, I would take her to the vet. Because if they've injured their lens, you do need something to put in their eye that's going to heal it. Here we go, sweetie. Good girl. Love you, Apple. Alright, so... I just still have to fill up waters, but we're done. That's nothing exciting. Hey, sweetie. Hey, buddy. Hey, sweetheart. Okay. So I will see you all later. Bye-bye. Bye, sweetie. Goodbye. If you like watching guinea pig videos, learning how to care for us, seeing product hauls or reviews, or really anything else guinea pig, please subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Down below I've left two more videos for you to pick from, so keep on watching!